Hello there future ACCs, this is Vishnu Vijay, a proud Finn drama and your lecturer for the audit and assurance paper. So folks, in this session, we will be looking at a past paper question within the CBE environment. Now, it's kind of interesting because this is kind of different from the normal questions that you would expect in an audit and assurance exam. How so? Well, basically, when it comes to the audit and assurance exam, there are quite a few questions that you would expect to show up in the exam, isn't it? Such as the audit risk question or substantive procedures, impact on auditors report related questions, and of course, uh, the internal control deficiencies and test of control questions as well, isn't it? So that's basically something that you would expect. However, there can also be some different questions as well, isn't it? So we are looking at one of those different questions because whenever a different question pops up in the exam, a lot of students get nervous as to how exactly can you tackle this or what exactly should be the approach here, etc. Isn't it? And this is exactly what we'll be looking at in this particular question. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to get more informative videos as well. Now, let's deep dive into this particular question and what exactly uh, does it require us to do, shall we? Now, even if it is in the CBE environment, the first tip that we adopt is basically to read the requirement, isn't it? So let's take a look at the requirements here, shall we? For each of the three methods identified in the table, you have to describe the method for documenting internal control systems and explain an advantage of using this method. Okay, so what's the idea here, guys? So there are three methods stated here. Okay, folks, I've already filled in a demo answer here just for our reference. But yeah, this particular things would be already provided. So we have to talk about narrative notes, flowcharts, as well as questionnaires, isn't it? So we have to describe as to what these methods are. And then you have to explain one advantage as well. Okay, folks, and this is for six marks, isn't it? And that's basically a simple question, isn't it? It's kind of easy to answer as well. Now, uh, it's kind of a direct theory question. Okay, folks, there is not much thinking required here. However, we still have to read the scenario and then attend this, okay, folks, so that if we can relate our answer to scenario information, then that would be a great approach, isn't it? So that's basically why it should be the method. method. Now, moving on to the next requirement, relating to the same scenario, we have in respect of the internal control systems of Swift, Swift Core, we have to do the following things. We have to identify and explain seven key controls which auditors may seek to place reliance on and describe a test of control the auditor should perform to assess if each of these key control is operating effectively. Okay, so what do we have to do here? We have to identify the key controls from the scenario and then explain on it, isn't it? So normally we will be expecting a question that asks us to identify deficiency here, isn't it? However, now we have to point out, just we just have to point out the key controls. So what exactly should our answer look like? Because we know that if it had been the deficiencies, which we would have wanted to identify, then we could have easily identified it from the scenario and explained it, isn't it? However, when it comes to the key control, what should we explain? That's a question that you may have, isn't it? So that actually depends upon the scenario itself. So let's read through that. So these are the two questions that we need to tackle. So keep this in mind. Now let's read through the scenario. So what exactly is the scenario all about? It is 1st July 2005. Swiftco prints books, which it sells online and supplies to retailers across the country. The company's year end is 30th September 2005. Okay. So folks, always highlight the year end. Okay, folks, that's kind of a really important thing to understand here. It may not be that relevant to this question, but when it comes to questions like, let's see, an audit risk question or so, then it would be a bit unnecessary to highlight, to understand as to what the year end is. Okay, folks, there could be audit risk in relation to subsequent events there, isn't it? So that's basically why we have to highlight this. Okay, folks, and what else? You are an audit supervisor. Well, congratulations on that, guys. You're an audit supervisor in this particular question with Tau Ken and Co preparing draft audit programs and reviewing the internal control documentation in preparation for the interim audit. Okay, so we're conducting an audit at the interim phase. And basically we have to, what do we have to do? We have to review the internal control documentation as well, isn't it? That's part of our responsibility as an audit supervisor, isn't it? So what else? 
So we have quite a few systems provided here, basically two. We have payroll as well as purchases. So let's take a look at as to how these systems function, shall we? Swiftco employees, factory staff who are required to work a standard shift of eight hours per day. Okay. No staff members are required to work overtime. All staff members are paid monthly by bank transfer. Okay. The company has a human resource department which is responsible for setting up all new joiners and a payroll department which processes the wages and salaries. Okay, so that's basically the situation when it comes to the payroll function, isn't it? So what else? When a new employee joins the company, HR completes a new joiner's form, okay, which includes a unique employee number for each employee. Okay, so this is a key control that we have, isn't it? The HR, what they do is, they complete a new joiner's form. Okay, that's part of the formalities of a new joinee, most probably. And of course, they have a unique employee number to each of the employees. Okay, that can be seen to be a control measure. However, we can't just point things out. Okay, we have to explain why this is a key control within the organization. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind and what else? The new joiner's form is sent to the payroll department so that the new employees can be set up for payment. Okay, so that's basically how the control system works and what else? The unique employee number must be entered into the payroll system before the employee can be added to the payroll, which is a really effective control, isn't it? This actually prevents the particular HR or any other relevant respons responsible personnel to add in unnecessary individuals or bogus employees into the system, isn't it? So that's basically actually what it prevents to do. Okay, folks? So, we have to discuss the key controls, isn't it? So when we have to discuss the key controls, what exactly could be the approach that we should, we can take to structure our answer? First of all, as we normally do, we can just identify the control from the scenario. Just copy paste it, isn't it? We can just select the instance, that's basically this particular sentence right here, copy it and paste it to our response option. That's one thing. So we've identified the key control. Now what do we have to do? We have to explain it, isn't it? So what should the explanation here be? If it was a deficiency, then we could basically state the impact of that particular deficiency for the organization, isn't it? However, we're not asked to do that, isn't it? What we are asked to do is, we are asked to identify and explain the key controls, isn't it? So we already identified it. Now what we have to do is, we have to explain. Okay, books, what should be the explanation here? The explanation should be, how this particular control prevents an error or fraudulent activity from happening within the organization. Okay, folks, that is what you have to explain here. Okay, folks, on a monthly basis, an exception report relating to changes to the payroll standing data is produced and reviewed by the payroll manager who evidences the review. This is yet again another control that we have within the organization, isn't it? So we can comment on this as well. Okay, folks, the particular exemption report, which has been noted regarding the changes to the standing data within the payroll system, is basically reviewed by a senior official such as the payroll manager, which is an effective control to understand as to whether the exceptions are being, you know, noted and uh, such an appropriate changes are being made, such an appropriate actions are being taken if there are some sort of errors or unnecessary changes to the standing data, etc. Isn't it? So that's something that we can point out as well. A really relevant point. And what else? Employee hours worked and hourly wage rates are present into the system. Okay, which automatically calculates the gross and net pay along with relevant deductions and generates employee pay slips. Okay, which is understandable. And what else? The payroll supervisor selects a sample of pay slips, reperforms the gross and net pay calculation, and investigates any discrepancies. The sample pay slips are then signed as evidence of this review. Okay, so this is yet again a really effective control that we have under the payroll function, isn't it? So what do they do? The payroll supervisor, what he does is he takes a sample of the pay slips, recalculates or reperform the calculation done by the system, just to make sure that there are no errors in that calculation, isn't it? So that's an effective control measure. And what he do is he signs it off, isn't it? To showcase the, that he has 
uh, you know reviewed that particular uh, calculations okay folks so that's basically it so that's yet again a really effective control that we can use in our answer as well isn't it so there are two aspects to it one is the recalculation aspect and of course there is the signing aspect as well okay folks you can uh, showcase it at two different points if you want to as well however when you're presenting your answer, what, what's the next thing that you should do? You shouldn't only just identify the things, but you should also be able to explain the uh, as to why the key control persists in that particular organization. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. We will, of course, look into the answer to understand more about that, shall we? But let's just finish reading the scenario. We have purchases as well, isn't it? So what's the idea here? The company has a purchasing department based at its head office, which is great. When raw materials are required, the production supervisor submit a requisition form to the purchasing department, which is what normally happens within an organization, isn't it? What else? A multi-chart purchase order is generated and the purchasing manager authorizes all orders up to $5,000. Okay. So this, is, this can be said to be a control within the organization, isn't it? And what else? Orders over 5,000 are authorized by purchasing director. So, the appropriate orders are being authorized by the appropriate individuals, isn't it? So, there is a, an appropriate level of uh, authorization happening for orders below and over $5,000. Okay, folks, this is yet again a key control that we can highlight as well. And what else? The warehouse process team processes goods received from suppliers. They agree the goods received to the purchase order and check the quantity and quality of goods. Okay, so what's the idea here? So we have a warehouse team. Okay, that's good. They process the goods that are received from the suppliers. And what they do is they agree the goods received to the, this is our control measure, isn't it? They agree the goods to the uh, purchase order as well as the quantity. They check for the quantity and quality of goods as well. This is yet again a key control that we have within the organization. And what exactly does it prevent? It prevents the organization from incurring unnecessary costs, isn't it? So that's something that we can present in our answer. And what else? On completion of those checks, a goods received note is produced. Okay. One copy of goods received note is signed and filed in the warehouse. And another copy is sent to the finance department, which is an effective process. And what else? A payables ledger clerk logs the purchase invoices in batches of 20 into the uh, purchase day book utilizing control totals. Okay. A batch control sheet is completed for each of the 20 invoices and clerk signs to evidence the checks are undertaken as well. Yet again, another uh, control in relation to authorization, isn't it? So just to make sure that the batch, uh, batches has been entered into the system appropriately, as simple as that. And finally, we have supplier statement reconciliations are performed on a monthly basis, which is yet again another really important control that we should have within the organization, isn't it? So we've identified more than around seven uh, key controls from the scenario itself, isn't it? So all you have to do is you just have to choose the uh, controls which you can explain in a wonderful manner and then present it as your answer. Okay, folks, so moving on. All differences are fully investigated and financial controller reviews these reconciliations. Okay, which is great. Invoices are paid in accordance with the supplier's credit terms. The finance director authorizes the bank transfer payment list. For suppliers having first agreed the amounts to be paid to the supporting documentation and having reviewed the list to list for duplicate payments as well. Okay, so this is yet again another key control. So there were a lot of key controls that we've noted from this particular scenario, isn't it? So what do we have to do here? We just have to identify these, just copy paste the instances from the scenario to my answer and then explain as to what exactly does this control prevent from happening. Okay, folks, that's basically how you can score marks for that particular question. So keep this in mind. Okay, folks. So that's basically all about the scenario. Now let's take a look at the uh, instance over here, shall we? Auditors are required to document a company's accounting and internal control system as part of their audit process, which is something that we've learned throughout our syllabus, isn't it? So that's basically it. And what else? Three methods are available for documenting internal control systems. And these are narrative notes, flowcharts, and 
question is. Okay, so what do we have to do here? We just have to explain what these are and then provide one advantage to it, isn't it? So that's basically it. Okay, folks. So I have an answer right here. So let's take a look at as to how this is done, shall we? So let's take a look at narrative notes first of all, shall we? So what are narrative notes exactly? These are basically a written description or a detailed description of the systems of the within the audit client, isn't it? So that's basically as to what it is. And we've learned that from our sessions as well, isn't it? So remember that. So we're just plainly applying that knowledge that we've learned throughout our sessions to our answer. That's basically what we're doing here. Okay, folks. Now, uh, we have narrative notes which consist of a written description of the system and they detail what occurs in the system at each stage and include details of any control which operate at each stage as well. That's basically it. Okay, folks, a simple description as to what it is and that will get you another one mark. Okay, folks, and what else? And we just have to provide one more advantage here, isn't it? So they are simple to record after discussion with staff members and these discussions are easily written up as notes. As simple as that. That's basically what we do, isn't it? So we just, you know, ask one of the staff members within the audit client as to how the system works and write it down. As simple as that. So that's basically uh, another advantage that we stated here. So yet again, another one mark available for the advantage. Okay, folks. So two marks have already been scored for narrative notes. Let's go to two marks for flowcharts as well, shall we? So when it comes to flowcharts, what's the idea here? Flowcharts are diagrammatic illustration of the internal control system. Lines usually demonstrate the sequence of events and standard symbols are used to signify controls or documents. That's basically what we do, isn't it? It's just a pictorial representation of the internal control systems within the organization. As simple as that. I'll get one mark for stating that particular aspect. And what about the advantage of this? With flowcharts, it is easy to view the system in its entirety as it is all presented together in one single diagram. As simple as that. One mark for the description and the other mark for stating the advantage in this particular question. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. What else? We also have questionnaires. So let's take a look at that. Internal control questionnaires or internal control evaluation questionnaires contains a list of questions for each major transaction cycle. ICQs are used to assess whether control exists, whereas ICEQs assess the effectiveness of controls in place. So what have I done here? I've just briefly explained as to what it is and I'll get one mark for it, isn't it? And we've learned all of these throughout our sessions as well, isn't it? So remember that, just apply that knowledge directly and you'll get one easy mark. And what about the advantage? That's yet again something that we've learned as well, isn't it? So questionnaires are kind of quick to prepare, isn't it? That is exactly the advantage that I've stated here. Questionnaires are quick to prepare, which means they are timely method for recording the system. Now, when it comes to the exam, a common mistake that a lot of students do is they just use phrases instead of sentences. For example, in this particular advantage, I specifically stated that uh, it is quick to prepare, isn't it? Okay, folks, however, I've also added value to the point by stating that it is a timely method for recording the system, isn't it? So I've added value to that point, okay, because I haven't just stated the phrase that it's easily understandable or easy to prepare or uh, simple or something like that. Okay, folks, don't, use, don't just use words and phrases, rather use full and complete sentences in your exam, okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So, have we scored six marks here? Yes, most definitely, isn't it? We scored uh, six marks by stating the description as well as the advantage of all the three methods that is narrative notes, flowcharts, as well as questionnaires, isn't it? As simple as that. Now, moving on to the next question, which we've all been waiting for, isn't it? So let's take a look at that. So what do we have to do here? Identify and explain seven key controls. And of course, you should also provide a test of control for each of these as well. Okay, folks. Now, scrolling down, there we go. Let's take a look at the first one, shall we? Swift Co has a separate human resource department which is responsible for setting up all new employees. So we've noted that particular point as well, isn't it? The payroll processes the wages and salaries, whereas the HR processes all the new joinees and things like that. Okay, folks, so there is a segregation of duties there, isn't it? So that is exactly what has been highlighted here, okay, folks? So I've identified this particular portion from the scenario itself and I can just basically copy paste 
the sentences from the scenario to my answer. That's totally fine. Now comes to the explanation aspect, which I basically have to type it in, isn't it? So what am I typing it in? Let's take a look. Having a segregation of roles between HR and payroll departments reduces the risk of fictitious employees being set up and also being paid. Isn't it? So what is what is the idea here? We're just explaining the risk that is avoided by having this control, isn't it? When it comes to deficiencies, what do we do? We identify the deficiency and explain as to how it can impact the organization. That's basically what we do, isn't it? However, in this particular question, we're not asked to point out deficiencies, rather, we're just identifying the controls that we have in place within the organization. Okay, folks, and what exactly is the explanation that I provided here? The explanation is that there is a segregation of duty, which prevents the organization from having any fictitious employees in their payroll records, as simple as that. One mark for stating this, okay, folks, and what else? And remember, guys, this is a 14 mark question, okay, folks, so one mark for uh, identifying uh, and explaining the key controls and one mark for providing the test of controls as well. So what would be the test of control in this particular situation? Let's take a look at that. Review the job descriptions of payroll and HR to confirm the split responsibilities with regards to setting up new joiners. So what is a test of control exactly? The stiff controls are basically some tests conducted by the auditor to make sure as to whether the particular organization systems are operating effectively or not, isn't it? So consider this, okay, folks, we have a normal control within the organization and, and some auditors are coming into that particular audit client to understand as to what exactly are the systems or are the systems operating effectively or not. So what exactly would they do to understand as to whether there is segregation of duties or not? That is what we have to think about here, okay, folks. So what can be done? All we have to do is we just have to take a look at the job descriptions of the human resource department as well as the payroll uh, department as well, isn't it? So has the responsibility actually been segregated? That's basically what we are trying to understand here, okay, folks. So remember that. Now, moving on to the next one. All new employees are assigned a unique employee number by HR. The payroll system is unable to process new joiners without inclusion of the employee number. Yet again, what, did we, what have we done here? We just copy pasted this particular instance from the scenario as simple as that. And what exactly would the explanation be? As payroll staff are unable to set up new joiners without the employee number from joiner form, it reduces the risk of fictitious employees being added up to the payroll yet again. Okay, folks, we have yet again another control that reduces the risk of having bogus employees or fictitious employees within the payroll system, which can create unnecessary costs for the organization, isn't it? So that's a preventive measure taken here. I have well explained that and I'll get one mark for stating that. Now, what should be the test of control then? Attempt to add a new joiner uh, to the payroll system without a unique payroll number. Okay, folks, so what was the Control here, the control is that you need to enter a unique employee number into the system to add a new employee, isn't it? So what the auditors can do here is that they can just, you know, provide a dummy employee number or they can just uh, try to add a new employee without providing the unique employee number. Okay, folks, that's something that we can uh, do, you know, to understand as to whether the control is operating effectively or not, isn't it? So that's basically it. Okay, folks. And of course, yeah, ideally the system should reject the particular uh, dummy data that we've entered as auditors in it. So that's basically something that has been pointed out. Okay, folks, it's easy to think of a test of control as long as you think of an explanation or the reason why we have that control in place. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So uh, moving on, on a monthly basis, an exception report of changes to the payroll standing data is produced and reviewed by the payroll manager, which is an effective control. We've copy pasted that from the scenario, yes. But what is the explanation here? Let's take a look at that. This ensures that and any unauthorized amendments to standing data are identified and investigated on a timely basis so that the data used in the payroll is run, is valid and accurate, isn't it? So what, what is the control objective here? The control objective is to make sure that the standing data is accurate and complete, isn't it? So that's basically it. And to make sure that no unnecessary personnel or unauthorized people have changed the particular standing data within the payroll. Okay, folks, that's basically it. One mark for explaining that. And what should be the test of controls here? 
Okay, so we're talking about exception reports. Okay, and we know that the particular uh, payroll manager signs it off as evidence of review, isn't it? So all we have to do is we just have to take a look at these reports and understand as to whether there are uh, they are authorized by the payroll manager or not, isn't it? As simple as that. Okay, folks. So select a sample of monthly exception reports and evidence so review for evidence of review and follow up of any unexpected changes uh, pointed out by the uh, payroll manager. Okay, folks. So that's basically it. Okay, folks. That's basically the test of control. Kind of easy to think about, isn't it? Now, moving on to the next aspect. The payroll supervisor selects a sample of pay slips and recalculates the gross to net pay calculation, compares the result to the output from the payroll system and investigates any discrepancies. So that's basically the control. We copy pasted it. And then what exactly is the explanation that we provide here? This reduces the risk that automated system generated errors during the payroll processing. Any errors would be identified on a timely basis to prevent wages from being over or underpaid. What are we trying to do here? We're just making sure that the automated systems are generating the accurate data, isn't it? So that's basically it. I'll explain that and I'll get one mark for that. And what should be the test of control then? For a sample of monthly payrolls, we perform the calculation. Okay, folks, the auditors can just reperform the calculation for a sample of items just to make sure that it is accurate or not, isn't it? So that's basically something that we can do. And of course, if we have, as auditors, if we have identified any sort of discrepancies, we can ask the payroll supervisor who was in charge of doing this process. Okay, folks, so that's basically what has been stated as a test of control. Kind of easy if you think about it, isn't it? What else? Well, now we are moving on to the controls that we've pointed out within the purchase segment. Okay, folks, so let's take a look at that. The warehouse department agrees the receipt of goods from suppliers to a copy of the purchase order and confirms the quantity and quality of the goods received and signs the goods received notes to evidence the checks. Okay, so what's the idea here? Well, we have pointed this particular control out within the scenario itself, but why do we have this? Or what is the control objective here? Let's take a look at that, shall we? This ensures that SwiftCo is not recording liabilities and subsequently paying for the receipt of inferior quality goods or for or goods that they did not order. So that's basically the idea here, isn't it? We're just making sure that the goods that we received are of the appropriate quality, avoids the risk of paying unnecessarily for the goods that we have not ordered, isn't it? So that's basically the uh, explanation or the reason why we have such a control within the organization. Now, moving on to the test of control for this. So how can we test this particular aspect? Well, all we have to do is we just have to review a sample of GRNs held in the warehouse department for signatures, isn't it? As evidence of checks are being undertaken on received, of course, that's basically it. Okay, folks, so if they have conducted, if they have reviewed these things, the particular uh, GRNs should have so the evidence of checks as well, isn't it? That has been pointed out right over here. So the warehouse team, what they do is they sign the GRNs to uh, evidence that they have checked for the quality as well as various other aspects, isn't it? So we just, as all it is, we just have to take a sample of GRNs and inspect for that evidence of review, as simple as that. Okay, folks, that's basically the test of control here. And what else? Then we have purchase invoices. Okay, so purchase invoices are logged into the purchase daybook in batches utilizing control totals. That's yet again an effective control. And uh, why exactly, what exactly is the risk that this particular control prevents? Let's talk about that, shall we? Utilizing control totals ensures both completeness and accuracy over the input of purchase invoices. If the invoices are not all input completely and accurately, payables may be misstated, isn't it? So that's what we're ensuring here, okay, folks? Is the payable balance is appropriately uh, stated or not, okay, folks? If it is misstated, then it should be pointed, at, pointed out, isn't it? So that's basically what we are trying to understand by utilizing this particular control. We've explained that and I'll get one mark for that. Now, what would be the test of control here? Select a sample of control total sheets and review for evidence of control totals being utilized and the clerk's signature. And then we have the controls in relation to purchase invoices as well, isn't it? Purchase invoices are logged into the purchase debug in batches utilizing control totals. Utilizing control totals ensures both completeness 
and accuracy over the input of purchase invoices. If the invoices are not all input completely and accurately, the payables may be misstated. So what are we doing here? We're just making sure that all the payables has been recorded appropriately and everything has been input into the system appropriately or not, isn't it? So that's basically it. And we pointed that out. I'll get one mark for that. But so what would be the test of control then? Select the sample of control total sheets, which has been conducted by the clerk. And then we take a look at as to whether this has been signed off by the clerk itself. Okay, just to make sure that that particular control has actually occurred or not. Okay, folks, as simple as that. Okay, folks. So the test of control is something that we can think about just by understanding the particular control process itself, isn't it? So keep this in mind. Okay, folks, what else? And finally, we've also noted a point in relation to the supplier statement reconciliation as well, isn't it? So what's the idea here? Supplier statement reconciliations are undertaken on a monthly basis and these are reviewed by the financial controller. Okay, is that an appropriate control measure? Yes, it is. And what is the advantage to it? That is what we have to explain in the second paragraph, isn't it? This ensures that any or errors in the recording of purchases and payables are identified and corrected in a timely manner and therefore that payables are complete and accurate as well. Okay, folks, this is what this particular control uh, provides us with. Okay, folks, so that's basically as to what this control is and I'll get one mark for that. Now, what would be the test of control in this instance then? Well, of course, if it's reviewed by the financial controller, we can yet again take a look at the evidence of review, isn't it? So that's something that we can do. We can review the file of reconciliation to ensure that they are being performed on a regular basis. That's one thing that we can ensure. And they have been reviewed by the responsible official. Okay, folks, just look for the uh, signature or evidence of review. That's basically it. Okay, folks. So, how many uh, key controls have you identified here? Seven. And what was in the requirement? We have to identify seven controls. Yes, we've done that. And have we provided test of controls for all of these? Most definitely, yes, isn't it? As simple as that, okay, folks? So this is how you score 14 marks for this particular question. As simple as that, okay, folks? And of course, we've covered a lot of exam techniques more and above this, isn't it? So throughout our session. So remember all those and keep on practicing a lot of questions, okay, folks? Keep on practicing a lot of questions because question practice is as important as learning the syllabus itself. Okay, folks, so that's basically it. Okay, because all you have to keep in mind is that you have to read the requirement and understand as to what exactly does it require and then how to score marks in, in, in this particular area. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. In this particular question, the requirement is to identify and explain the key controls, isn't it? So what have we done? We've identified the issue from the scenario itself. And then what we did was we explained as to how this particular control is useful to the organization or what exactly is the risk that is prevented by having this control, isn't it? That is what you have to point out here, okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So that's all that I wanted to cover in this particular session. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them in the comment section, okay, folks. So stay tuned for more informative videos. This is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now. Thank you.